the answer is more a bit more complicated, more complex, I should say, uh, because in the diets you have a mixture of mycotoxins. So it depends on the composition of this mixture. Of course, we can talk about a warmer climate, more warm uh, tropical climates that fumonisins and aflatoxins can be a problem and mild climates. We can talk always about the oxynivalenol, but it's more a question of the mixture of mycotoxins and the mycotoxins that are there in the diet and they don't measure. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Reggiani Rodriguez Dos Santos, a research scientist and innovation coordinator at SFR. So Reggiani, I know you came on this podcast a little about a little over a month ago with Dr. Estrada, and you guys talked about mycotoxins and how that relates to climate change. And I kind of wanted to build on that topic a little bit, but change it a little bit in terms of relating mycotoxins back to pigs. So I guess my first question to you is from all the experience you have and the research you've done with SFR, which mycotoxins would you say are the most dangerous to pigs? Thank you for the introduction. And I'm really glad to be here for the second time in a short time. Uh, this is a very open question because usually I get this question, which mycotoxins should I worry about it? Well... Um, the, the answer is more a bit more complicated, more complex, I should say, uh, because in the diets you have a mixture of mycotoxins. So it depends on the composition of this mixture. Of course, we can talk about a warmer climate, more warm uh, tropical climates that fumonisins and aflatoxins can be a problem and mild climates. We can talk always about the oxynivalenol. But it's more a question of the mixture of mycotoxins and the mycotoxins that are there in the diet and they don't measure. So we can put all together those aflatoxins, fumonisins, and the main uh, fusarium toxins. And fusarium toxin, mycotoxins is deoxynivalenol, zearalenol, uh, T2, and also some mycotoxins that we don't talk about as yet, like anionins. Gotcha. So one question I had is when looking at the mycotoxin levels in your feed, is there certain stages of production where you need to be more attentive, such as are the nursery pigs more sensitive to mycotoxins than grower finisher pigs? Yeah, yeah. For a long period of time, uh, we thought that, for example, the exposure to one close to one ppm tone it was not a problem for pigs, for example, because we were performing a lot of studies with growing finisher pigs, and they are quite resilient to that such exposure. But let's go to the piglets during the winning. That's the most one of the most stressful moments in their life. They are getting a part of the mother. They are they are having new social contacts. They are changing the milk to a solid diet. Uh, they have more risks to diarrhea. Everybody knows that during this winning process, they have more diarrhea. They have more. Uh, the immune system is affected because they are under stress. And these stress conditions are going to make is going to make them uh, more susceptible to mycotoxin infection. The effect of the mycotoxin. So the mycotoxins that come in the diet for uh, the piglets in the weaning or in the growing finish, the effect is going to be different. So, for example, uh, we did a lot of trials uh, in the last years with naturally contaminated grains, and then we see that the first fourteen days of exposure. Are, uh, in this period, they are quite sensitive, and if they have an outbreak of infection disease, if you have on top of that some minor level of mycotoxins, and what I call minor, uh, levels that are just below the maximum recommendation here in Europe. So we have the EFSA, the European uh, Authority for Food Safety. So it's around 0 0.9 ppm. It's going to decrease to 0 0.7 ppm. If you have the same amount of done in the growing finisher diet, you don't expect differences in performance. If you go to these piglets, we see a decrease in performance. And in case you have disease outbreak, we need to use, for example, more antibiotics to treat them. So there is a big concern, not only about that they are more susceptible, but also maybe with the use of antibiotics. Gotcha. And while we talk about mycotoxins, whenever you mention mycotoxins around pig people, the first thing that's going to come to their mind is the oxynivalenol. So when it comes to Dawn, can you explain a little bit about why this particular mycotoxin is so important and what it does to affect 
uh, pig intestinal health? Yeah, one of uh, the major f- functions of uh, Don, Don is really elegant molecule because it can cause inflammation or immunosuppression. So when you talk about inflammation in the intestine, we, uh, we already can imagine that the absorption of nutrients is decreased if they are suffering from some stress like the diarrhea after weaning, then this inflammation is going to be higher. And on top of that, this mycotoxin is able uh, to break tight junctions. Tight junctions are like gates that uh, put together the intestinal cells. When these gates are open, this means that all those microorganisms or large molecules or pathogenic bacteria that should not come into the blood flow, they are going to pass through because we don't have the gates protect anymore. And this is one of the um, uh, fun- uh, effects of don contamination. These gates, these tight junctions are broken. So you also mentioned some other mycotoxins earlier on, some of which are not as well known like Don, specifically more emerging mycotoxins such as ineatins that appear to affect pigs. So why was this mycotoxin not indicated as much of a threat to pigs in the past? First, because we were not measuring. Uh, we have the ineatins A, A1, B, B1. Usually when you prepare the diets, so you used to check them to see the presence. And it's not only these four, but we see very often Altenario and Bovaris in the diets of pigs, and they are can be harmful. Uh, until four or five years ago, usually the maximum level that I could find several diets that we prepared were close to uh, 50 micrograms per kilo in the final diet, so 50 ppb. But uh, in the last years, we see that is increasing the levels of this mycotoxin together with the improved methods to measure and detect these mycotoxins to to quantify uh, in both diet and also in the serum of the animals, in the plasma also. So in the last four years, uh, we saw that this uh, final level of this mycotoxin can increase 10 times in the final diet. So we we had we found a barley for uh, just as an example that was tested for the big six mycotoxins. So we could not find aflatoxins, fumonizins, zearalenon, don, T2. We could not find any of these mycotoxins. However, when I went to the deep analysis, we could find that anantins were present. And the anantins in this barley were close to 7 milligram per kilo. That means 7 ppm. At Barnes, we're more than just another feed additive company. We are driven by science, innovation, and an understanding of the challenges you face in the ever-changing world of animal agriculture. We are your trusted partner for new-to-market natural alternative to choline chloride, Colin Plus FC, as well as enzymes, prebiotics, probiotics, macro minerals. To learn more about our product offering, visit barnes-ne.com forward slash animal nutrition. Together, there's always a better solution. Gotcha. So with ineatins, since this mycotoxin is not necessarily as well known and common as Dawn is, what can people expect to see if they have high levels of this mycotoxin in their diets? Yeah, the first uh, symptom is a decrease in feed intake and the decrease, uh, consequently, the decrease in growth. Uh, I got uh, the contaminated barley that I was explaining before because people were calling me uh, to say, I have symptoms of DOM, but I cannot find DOM. So people were just looking for DOM. And I was telling the barley was clean. There was no dioxin you valley now. And when we made the analysis, we saw that these anantins were present at very high levels. And we, we of course, I got this barley to make some trials with piglets. And what we see, indeed, that is even if you use a, a maximum level of 0.7, 0.8 uh, ppm, that is 0.7 milligrams per kilo diet, final diet, we see already a decrease in the feed intake, a decrease in uh, growth. Uh, the development of the intestine is impaired. So we, we will check say spoiler, we are preparing a publication, but uh, markers for the development of the intestine show that these piglets, they don't have a well-developed intestine. 
And one thing that you are checking also is not only related to the intestine, but because we saw that inflammation, so it's activate inflammation. It is same, sometimes in the same manner as uh, dawn, but sometimes different. So there's an uh, uh, inflammation taking place. And we are trying to uh, connect the effect of this mycotoxin of the intestine with the brain uh, of the piglets to, to check, for example, if done, we know that uh, the feed intake is decreased because it activates anorexia uh, in the pigs. So you want to understand what is happening with any antins and how they are affecting the welfare, for, the, for example, of these piglets. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Reggiani, for coming on the show and sharing all your expertise with us on this topic. Thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you in the next time. Sharing all the data from the publication was mentioning and sharing also all the findings. Yep, absolutely. I'll be keeping an eye out for it. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.